Candy Cooks here and today I'm going to show you how to roast this beautiful whole Branzino fish with roasted tomatoes and lemon and delicious seasonings. This is a perfect light meal for summertime cooking. So let's get to cooking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our Branzino ready. Look at that y'all. Three Branzino um, from Costco. They were $30.14. I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a quick uh, rinse off and then put them on the platter for cooking. You wanna make sure, you, let me turn the water off. You wanna make sure your fish is very fresh when you buy it by looking at the eyes. This is actually a couple of days old. It's been in my refrigerator, but I'll show you a video now the day I bought it very clear. And that's what you want to see. It's not slimy. It doesn't smell stinky. It smells like salt water. It smells just like the ocean, which I just came from in uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Such a beautiful place to vacation. Look at the fishy, fishy. Branzino. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'll stop. It's already stale. Washing it is just something I like to do. You can rinse it off with vinegar. I'm just gonna wash this off with water. I'm different with my seafood than I am my land animals, which I'm eating less of, actually. If you wanted to scale this yourself, you could take your knife and just go ahead and see if you get any scales with the Branzino. I don't typically have that problem like I do with the Red Snapper from Costco or Sam's. Look at that. No scales coming off. And you want to be sure to rinse the inside and the outside. I do like to take a knife and cut a slit on the inside of the meat just so I can get extra seasonings in there. And I'm going to throw my bag away. So, let me cut a little slit in here. So you can see it's already been gutted. But I'm going to cut a little slit in here in order to get extra seasonings. My lemon and dry seasonings in. You want to be sure when you cut inside the fish not to cut the outside flesh. Okay, we don't need that paper towel anymore. Sorry, my arm is in the way. So I cut a little slit inside the fish, but I didn't cut on the outside. So we're going to get some more paper towels or you could use some um, kitchen cloth towels so you didn't have to use the disposable ones. But we're going to dry off our fish and I am using this mat. It's made by Martha Stewart. It fits my bacon pan. It's non-stick. You can find different brands of these. I have a link to this in my description box in of this video. Uh, you don't need to add oil to this, but I am gonna add oil on the top and bottom of my fish. That's my personal preference. Let me wash my hands again. Because I'm about to touch my seasoning. Okay. So I just put a little bit of olive oil spray. You can use the spray of your choice. This is store brand extra virgin olive oil cooking spray. And I'm just gonna add seasoning to the outside and the inside of my fish. And I did um, wash my hands before touching my bottles of seasoning. I use a complete seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, and thyme. You could really use any green herb of your choice thyme, oregano, rosemary. Rosemary might be a little bit strong, but if you know you like the rosemary flavor, then you could absolutely do that. And so I also have some lemons that I'm gonna wash and slice up. I'm not gonna slice them on my mat because I don't wanna cut the mat. So let's go ahead and add our fish. And so to each fish, I'm just going to add a bit of seasoning. And this is why I cut the slits because 
I want the seasoning to be inside in the meat and not just on the outside skin part, right? So can you see that? That's seasoned on the inside, that side isn't seasoned. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm wiping my right hand off. I'll rinse off uh, my bottles with a Clorox wipe at the end to make sure all my bottles are sanitized since I'm touching this fish. But it'll be okay and just give it a rub inside. So I'm gonna do some thyme, onion powder, complete seasoning. I'm gonna show y'all the recipe to make homemade complete seasoning that doesn't have um, MSG in it. So now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna spray a second side. So if you don't wanna use cooking spray, you absolutely could use cooking oil. So just use your olive oil or canola oil, any peanut oil, whatever oil you have on hand will be okay. So I'm gonna use my same cutting board that had my fish on it. So of course, technically you don't wanna prep your vegetables or fruit on the same board you do your meat with, but this fruit is going to actually be cooked with my meat. And the only person eating this is going to be me. So I feel safe doing it. If I was cooking for other people or in a commercial kitchen, of course, I wouldn't do this step. So I'm gonna put a couple of lime slices on the inside a couple on the outside, we'll call that a day. Lime on the, in, oh, did I say lime? I meant lemon, I'm so sorry. I have another, another video I'm about to do and that's gonna include lime, but. And then I just watched a video with someone cooking fish and he had lime pepper from Badia, which I have never seen before. So I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and squirt some lime juice in. I did it again. This is lemon juice on the inside. Lemon juice on the inside. Lemon juice on the inside. Now, I didn't cut these fish, which I'm actually going to do. I do it with my snapper, so I'm just gonna turn my fish so that it's long ways in front of me. I'm just gonna cut a slit on the diagonal. Not very deep, so the depth you need really depends on your fish and the sharpness of your knife. I just want a slit in there so that will help circulate the heat and cook the fish, but also it lets me know when my fish is transparent and no longer raw so let's take a look at this can you see the inside of this fish you see that you can actually see the flesh i'm just going to do one side this fish isn't too big so i don't think it's really required to do a lot of slits for cooking i'll just do the one side you know what let's just go ahead and do both sides and be consistent so Cut two slits. The number of slits you cut, it really does depend on the size of your fish. So for this size fish, I'll cut two slits. Bigger fish could get three or more, smaller fish could get one. But look at that, I cut through the side, but not all the way through the fish. Just cut on a diagonal. Uh, you don't have to worry about perfection here. Okay, so now I have lemon juice on the inside. I have lemons on the inside as well as on the outside. Lemon in there, lemon in there. Lemon, 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 lemon. Squeeze some more juice because I use this lemon on this uh, fishy cutting board, so I'm not gonna reuse it for anything else. So keep squeezing. And now I'm going to wash my hands again. Okay, so now we have our tomatoes. We are using grape tomatoes. 
These are from Costco, Juno Red Grip Tomatoes. Red Grip Tomatoes actually have less um, carbs in them than cherry tomatoes, although the shape is similar, but more like a grape instead of a, a round cherry ball. So we're just gonna give these a wash with some vinegar and then slice them up to go in with our fish. I'm not actually gonna use all of these tomatoes. I'm just gonna use some of them. I have another recipe that I'm gonna do with some tomatoes later today. Okay, that's good. So now let's wash them. So I just dried off my tomatoes and now with a dry hand, whenever you're using a knife, just slice your tomatoes. I'm going to slice them the long way. Some of them I'm actually gonna leave whole because I like the difference in consistency when they roast. So just about half cut in half and the other half will leave whole. And you could actually use a smaller knife than this one. This is just the first one <laughs> that I grabbed because it was the closest to me. So now that my tomatoes are washed and sliced, half of them slide, sliced, half are left whole, I'm gonna season them up just like I am the fish. So I'm just gonna give them a spray with my olive oil spray. You could use plain olive oil or any oil that you like. And then we're going to add some salt, pepper, and all of our seasonings uh, that we add to our fish. So you can see the seasonings there in the back. A little bit of salt. Roasted tomatoes really brings out the flavor of them. It's kind of hard to explain how, why it's so good, but I really like it. And actually I roast tomatoes um, with kale or with green vegetables and it comes out really yummy. So I'll show you those recipes in the future as well. So for now, we're just going to add garlic powder, onion powder, complete seasoning, salt and pepper, and our oil, and give that a nice quick toss. I also have my lemon sliced on the side, as you can see. And now we're just gonna add this to our fish. So let's sprinkle our tomatoes around. The lemon roasts nicely too. It gets a nice little char on it. Now we're gonna stick this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then halfway through, we're gonna take a look at it, flip it over if we need to, and then turn up the temperature or turn it down as we need. And look at this y'all, the fish came out perfectly and I didn't even need to flip it halfway through. Be careful because the pan is hot and so are the tomatoes with the liquid in them. But I'm gonna show you just how tender and white the flesh is. Look at how beautiful that is. So you can pair this with a side of rice or pasta or additional vegetable and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel.